Jesus is likely Beautiful. to be better than she Sparkly. ought to be. So Life. Away from Too big to define be. simply. It's, it's so many things. To be better than she ought to be. So straight away from where I've got to be. Someone always takes me home. Even though I know that sharing space in person before the pandemic was already hard for a lot of us, like we were already dealing with isolation, but I still think that when we were able to, even if it was just another buddy and you sitting in your bed, right, or another, are you, are y'all just like, you know, just like sitting in the water or doing something, something that's slow, something that's low spoons, like being able to do that was such a lifeline to just be like, I'm a person in this world. And like, we're doing the crypt things together and it'll be okay. It's so hard because I think it is what grounds us and reminds us that we can be slow or that we can create a new pace together or a new, like just a new temporality together. Like just not having that is so tough. Growing up here in Alberta, for a long time, there were no other deaf actors here. It was very isolating. I was the only deaf actor in in my whole city. Really, the first half of my life, I spent a good deal of time uh, trying to rep- like hide uh, parts of myself, aspects of me that I thought were uh, not welcome <laughs> in the world. When I moved to Toronto, finding the disability community and connecting with other people who had similar experiences, that completely changed everything. For the first time in my life, I was asked to make those parts of myself where, you know, visible and even loud. It was like a code. Uh, My differences, the things that I have been trying to hide was like a code to another way of of belonging. Community is really important right now, especially uh, now with everything happening in the world. A lot of my my autistic practice right now is not focused on output. It's focused on the practice itself. For me, I've I've always been like that. I don't look at the end product. It's more about the joy I feel while I'm creating it. That that zen it really gives me is what like draws me back all the time, right? Um, and also too because I'm not so focused on showing my work or selling my work, which you know I I definitely do do. Um, it really allows me to make those mistakes and not have to worry about creating like the perfect container don't think about being an artist just think about who you are i think that even that idea of you know the title of artist it can be related to who you are but the word artist itself i think that can be very confusing it can lead to a lot of confusion so i think getting focused on that you know about how to do art I think really it's inside us all it's just how you do it how you present it to the world how you find a chance to self-reflect and figure that out a lot of people feel like that that pressure you want to prove to people that you you know are capable that you're gonna excel that you're gonna achieve something and it's hard I think being an artist or an actor to see you know other folks finding work and I'm like where do they find this work like where do they where do they find that audition like you know wondering if am I doing everything in my power as well to put myself forward art exists in community regardless if we name it or not right creativity is it exists it's all around us regardless if we uh call ourselves artists or name it as art if we come into the world as children being artists we're all artists I think that as we grow older culturally we kind of put art as this like this idea of a production and business competition and in a way we ruin it right as we become adults I've always been a creative individual but of course I did go through a lot of society tells you no like oh so I thought maybe I should have to be a teacher or maybe I would have to do something I've never necessarily identified more with the word artist. I'm a creative. So it's more, I, I've just, I'm always so creative. I want to express myself. And whether that's through makeup, clothing, hair, performance, I'm just, I'm a creative person. That's very much who I am. Trust your gut, trust your instincts. It's important to really also start thinking. And when I say thinking, thinking about who you are, 
you know, that keep on that question of who you are, because it's important. We don't have to look at each other as like just cogs in a machine. If we can engage with each other in like deeper intentional ways that are actually about connecting and, and learning about each other and learning from each other, um, that we can really cultivate communities that are really rooted in care and intention. I really need that space to rupture and to fall apart and, and trying to advocate for that um, because I don't know how to be slow. Like actually consciously making that choice to be slow, I'm still figuring it out. And I think that's going to be a life's work, but I think it feels rupturous to me. It's very important to have a support system. It's important to take care of yourself. And to be able to level up that love for yourself, because if you can level up that love for yourself, it also means you'll be able to take care of other people better. Sustainability is about energy. And I think it's also about, you know, honoring. So I think about a circle that's like a, a permeable circle. It's like created with a dotted line. So there's ways to enter and there's ways to exit. And, you know, we can be closer or a little bit farther um, and we can flex. There's this principle in uh, permaculture. It's a term that, you know, mostly refers to uh, land stewardship, land care, um, way of interacting with land. Um, but there's also social permaculture. And so, so one of the principles of permaculture is redundancy, which is a funny word because you know to be redundant redundant sounds like something that's not needed but in permaculture redundancy actually means that if you need water then you're not receiving your water from one water source like maybe you have multiple rainwater collectors so if one collector bursts you still have a water supply from other rainwater collectors and and i think that that's for me and I don't think we've talked about this as a team, but it's something that I really center is that if somebody in the team or team members are need more time or are doing less well, then they can step out, you know, for a minute or a day or a week. And the whole structure doesn't collapse because we have redundancy. There's room, there's multiple minds and multiple hands at work and, and so we can we can we can flex to kind of accommodate our personal needs so that we're well, you know, we're we're doing and feeling well in our work. The first time that I've ever one shown my work and two like actually come out as an artist with disabilities, it was definitely coming out as like I have disabilities, I'm disabled, and this is my community, and I love my community. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a big mind shift for me to change from being ashamed of what I was going through and who I was really, and just being open and proud. And, and, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't like it, oh, well, like this is who I am and I'm not hiding anymore. Relationship is something that I really, really try to like center my practice in. I find when I'm making art or, you know, trying to make art, that's like in isolation or that's not really rooted in any kind of connection with other people. Mm -hmm. um, those are really the moments when I'm like, what am I, what am I actually doing here? What am I achieving? Like, is this, is this doing anything for my communities? Is this doing anything for me? The working in models that are really centered in relationship and community and that are about like, serving community in a multitude of ways. Um, and ultimately it just boils down to like connecting with people and actually having human connections. So when we have that opportunity to be creative and build relationships that embrace who we are, uh, the good and the bad, um, we can actually get better finding people with similar experiences. I think it can be very healing. There are many reasons why Creative Connector, I think, uh, evolved and and it, you know that's kind of one of the the core motivations wanting to create more opportunities for more people to find these spaces where they can make these connections and and really fully embrace who they are uh, with love. When I heard about the work that y'all were doing at Creative Users Project, like it really excited me because I was like, this is it! Like 
y'all are doing it virtually and I think it ends up becoming a landing space for so many people like I think that was really helpful for me to also rethink like how I understood disability arts um during the pandemic like I was like we'll be okay we'll be okay there's a directory (laughs) deaf and disability art is in the body of the creator this role amazing a channel for disability to be harnessed forged and reframed over and over again. Sharing our own stories. Let's come back to that one. Someone always takes me home.